More than 44 million Americans have filed for unemployment since mid-March, when the coronavirus pandemic forced many people to stay home. But despite the ongoing economic turmoil and increased number of businesses shutting down, the country's five biggest tech companies are growing and investing in the future. A new article in The New York Times headlined, The Economy is Reeling, the Tech Giant's Spy Opportunity, it explores how tech companies are using this moment to invest big money in an effort to expand. Mike Isaac joins me now from San Francisco. He is a technology reporter for The New York Times and the author of that article. Hi, Mike. Welcome. Thank you so much for being with us. Thanks. You know, the economy yeah. has been contracting since the U.S. entered a recession in February. So why are we seeing big tech companies expanding and investing at such a rapid rate? Yeah, totally. Um, it's funny. I was listening to Facebook's earnings call the other day, and Mark Zuckerberg uh, sort of came out and told investors pretty flatly, look, you know, in times of a recession, which we're in right now, uh, our ad rates uh, and the amount of money people are spending on advertising start to uh, dip, and we sort of track with the economy. But, uh, but Facebook is going to really reinvest in the business, in the company, and hopefully come out of this stronger instead of sort of retrenching and, and stop uh, doubling down on some of its efforts. And I think that's been a real theme for a lot of the, for at least the big five tech companies. And we've seen some evidence in the past. In, um, in the early 2000s, Apple, uh, you know, was coming off years of just sort of fl uh, floundering and ended up investing, um, doubling its R&D budget. And, uh, and out of that came things like iTunes and then eventually the I, uh, I, iPhone and the App Store. So I think there's evidence of if you spend more inside of a recession, at least in tech and software, you can end up even stronger than, when, than before. So this is almost a tried and true pattern for these tech companies. Is there anything different about this time around, though, that could turn that equation on its head at all? Sure. I mean, there's a lot of unknowns, you know. I mean, obviously, in, in past recessions in the financial crisis of 08 and uh, and before in the dot-com bust, there were different factors than now, uh, those being, you know, there wasn't a global pandemic and, uh, you know, quarantines and folks sort of not really sure when they're going to be able to leave their house or or how the how when a reopened society is going to look like, you know, what products are we going to be relying on? So there's been a lot of... Uh, ancillary side effects that haven't been really predictable. I've been hearing a lot of podcast companies are having a lot of problems because people listen to podcasts on their commute. And so uh, that, that, uh, that's been going down lately. Um, uh, at the same time, apps like Zoom and Skype are going up uh, dramatically. So I think it's a lot of right. watching and seeing how people use the tech that we're, we're using right now. That commute to your basement doesn't allow you to finish your podcast, but I guess, you know, those that surge in usage that Facebook and Google have seen as people try to stay in touch in online platforms and purchase things online. Did Zuckerberg say in that earnings call whether the surge in that kind of usage is making up for the loss in ad revenue? No, that's a good point. And, and that's one of the, uh, the problem points for Facebook is they've, they've seen a real surge in products like Messenger, uh, Facebook Messenger and WhatsApp, and they have video and voice calls on those. But those products don't actually make them money. They're free services mm -hmm. uh, that hopefully will drive their customers into using their ad-driven products like Instagram and Facebook. So uh, Zuckerberg cautioned, look, uh, we're seeing record usage. We're trying to keep the sites up and running because so many people are using them, but we still have to develop uh, ways to make money from these products. And I think that's the, the case for a lot of companies, say Slack or Zoom mm -hmm. or Apple, which offer free products that are not quite monetized yet. You know, if, if I were, you know, one of these big tech companies and I was looking to capitalize on this recession to expand, you know, when things get back to normal, I would say the biggest question mark on the table right now is the specter of deregulation, right? I mean, a lot of a lot of people, a lot of law, lawmakers in Congress think these tech companies are big enough already. So, I mean, are they betting? Are they gambling on the fact that these lawmakers are going to have the appetite to let them get even bigger post-recession? No, it's a it's a great question. I think it's still a question mark for all the tech companies. We see um, uh, just yesterday, uh, Apple uh, was seeing two uh, different antitrust cases sort of opening up against them. And for the App Store, 
uh, and sort of, you know, this idea of the, them being too big, the curse of bigness, I think, is what how some people refer to it. Uh, there's a lot of footsteps around Google with uh, U.S. attorneys around the country. They're, they're, I'm still not fully convinced that we know they're absolutely going to go after the tech companies. Um, I think a lot of it depends on what the election brings and the appetite versus uh, um, how Republicans are going to feel about it versus a potential Democratic uh, candidate for president. So it's still a big question mark. And I think post November, post November, we'll get a better idea. And it's also sort of interesting that lawmakers seem to, you know, switch their feelings about it depending on how they perceive these tech companies are receiving conservative versus liberal content, right? I mean, Republican lawmakers are all of a sudden are screaming for deregulation of, of Google after Google, you know, censored some things of the president's, and when usually it's the Democrats talking about deregulation. So it's an interesting uh, data point. That's that's been the sort of strangest point for me. It's become like a bipartisan effort to bludgeon these tech companies with the threat of of, of just coming in and breaking them up or regulating them in some other way. And uh, usually, you know, in the past, it has been Democrats that have been more hawkish on on some of these uh, initiatives, while Republicans have been really espousing free markets and letting businesses flourish. So it's been really strange, uh, and that's why it's even more unpredictable. As to who's going to act and and what they're going to do, what they're going to do post the election. Yeah, it's really hard to tell which way the wind is blowing in Congress sometimes when it comes to the tech companies. But my, Mike Isaac, thanks for joining us. You continue to cover it and keep us informed on that. Thank you so much. I will. Thanks for having me.